I was wondering if you could address how you can participate in this process if your profession, in your profession you are in a role of leadership. How can you do the faith, will, humility, have truth and love while being in a position of leadership? Well, it's no different to me being in a position of leadership or being in any other position. Um, I feel that a lot of the times we avoid doing these things because we are afraid. So, and this is what I discussed a lot in this discussion that I gave about, you know, putting it all together. The biggest single problem we have of doing all of these things is fear. And most of us have no idea of how afraid we actually are. And the more addictions there are in a society, the more afraid we are. So the reality is your society is a very addicted society, not just physically, but also very much emotionally, just like most Western nations are. And that means that there is a huge amount of fear that you're not facing, individually and collectively. Now, it's your fear that prevents you from thinking that you can engage these whether you're a leader or not. It makes no difference if you're a leader or you're not a leader. You can engage all of these things every time. So, for example, if you're a leader, many people who are leaders like being in a place where they can tell other people what to do. That's reality, right? If you're a true leader, you're not telling other people what to do. You're telling them how to discover what to do for themselves, which is a very, very different desire, right? So you're not asking people to do what you want. You're asking them to do what they want, but bring what they want into harmony with love. Now, as a leader, you have a great capacity to demonstrate that. Firstly, by your own example. Right? And then secondly, by what you teach to others. Right? So... And um, if I can give you some maybe personal examples about that. Um, if a person comes up to me and says, AJ, what should I do? I'm in this particular situation. The first thing I say to them, look, I can't tell you what to do. You have your life. You are a complete self-responsible individual from God's perspective. You have to make the choice about what you can do. Oh, I can't do that for you. That's number one. Secondly, I then say... But if I was in your position, these are the things I would consider. I would consider, what would love want me to do? If I was into telling the truth in all times, what would the truth demands I do? If I was humble, what would my humility want me to do? And would I just sit there, you know, all afraid of doing it? No, I would exercise my will to do it. No matter how much everyone around me disagrees with what I'm doing. Or no matter how much everyone around me wants to condemn me or maybe even kill me for what I'm doing. If I'm in harmony with love, I will still do it. It doesn't matter if I lose my job, lose my house, lose my family, lose my friends, lose my life. I will do it because I want to love and I want to do all of these things if I really want them. So can you see... You have great capacity, whether you're a leader or not, to demonstrate leadership through this process of your own example, engaging these things for yourself firstly, and then teaching other people how to engage these things for themselves, rather than telling them what to do. Now, if you look at most, you know, I would say most organisations on this planet, the leaders tell other people what to do. And initially, when we engage things this way, there would be pandemonium and total confusion on this planet. Because the majority of people don't want to love, don't want to tell the truth, don't want to be humble, don't want to use their will in harmony with all those things. They want to be told what to do so they don't have to take responsibility for their life. And when you try to make them responsible for their life, it takes many years sometimes for them to actually engage that process. So I've been teaching principles of divine truth uh, from in a public manner for the last 10 years. For the first five years, hardly a single person engaged any of the principles I taught them. Because the way I teach is that a person has to engage their own will. I can't force them, I can't make them, I can't sit here and be like some kind of uh, 
Anthony Robbins type of person who just jeez you all up and makes you go away feeling good about yourselves and, and good about your facade, in other words. And I can't do that either. All I can do is present truth to you, show you the way to God, and then leave it up to you. That's all I can do. Now, because that's all I can do, the changes come slowly. And the reason why they come slowly is because everyone else who hears will have to sincerely engage their will at some point for it to change. But once they do, the change is real. It's a firm foundation. Does that make sense? And so the changes that actually happen inside of the soul of the individuals are driven by themselves. And that is the most powerful driving force that any person can engage in their life, your own desires and passions driven by yourself. Because if somebody else is driving you, it means that you don't want to drive yourself. And what I'm trying to do is encourage every person to, number one, drive themselves, drive their own life, but number two, drive it in harmony with love. That's what we're trying to do. So rather than lead others, you're more facilitating them leading themselves. Yes, you could say that the way I'm, the le the way I'm a leader and, and God did place me in a position to be so is only by my example and by what I teach. It's not by me telling you what to do. You see, leadership on this planet is, is very much the opposite of what's done in the celestial realms of the spirit world. Leadership on this planet is getting a whole group of people together, most of whom don't want to do what you want. <laughs> and then you convince them to do what you want by giving some money or some other kind of reward and eventually they finish up doing what you want and the ones that don't do what you want you sack them and you get another group who are willing to do what you want that's how you lead isn't that the average <laughs> leadership and that if, if and that's the average leadership even in a religion if you think about it the majority of religions are exactly the same way except they say that what they want is what god wants there's the only difference, really. So they say, oh, this is what God wants you to do. I'm going to enforce that. And if you don't believe all that, I'm going to kick you out and get somebody in here who does. And, uh, and that's the way. In the same way. It's exactly the same way. Well, that's not leadership in God's eyes. Leadership in God's eyes is, through your own positive example, demonstrate these qualities and then teach other people how to demonstrate these qualities. It seems like the... the, um, the quality of leadership can be often confused with the arrogance that you talked about of course and the um the facade of course most leaders are in fact in a complete facade because they're mostly in addiction the reason why they've established themselves as a leader is because they want glory attention approval acceptance mm -hmm. all these different emotions that they're looking for a true leader doesn't look for any of those emotions so a true leader is able to lead when nobody else is following <laughs> does that make sense the true leader is not dependent upon other people's opinions of him or herself. Right? All she or he cares about is God's opinion of himself or herself. That's all he or she cares about. If we use the microphone, and please don't yell out, put up your hand, if that's okay. And no, I can't answer you now. I just need you to think about what I've just said as the reason why it's not loving. But can I just continue addressing? So it's very important to understand this, these important facts about what, what establishes you as a leader and what does not, from God's perspective. Now, from a human perspective, it's totally different. I agree. From a human perspective, leaders basically are, as I've described, they are people generally who are addicted to approval, acceptance and so forth, wanting to control, and as a result, they establish a regime of some kind, usually it's a business or some kind of religion or some kind of cult or other kind of force whether it be economic or political they establish these kind of parties political systems religions and so forth and then they try to enforce their will upon the group of people that's what they intend to do generally and that's how they demonstrate that they are a leader most of the time now there are some people who don't do that but the majority are like that a true leader though is going to be like this yep. thank you very much no worries do you want to ask the question now <laughs> So a true leader is a leader with nothing to gain. Exactly. That's exactly right. They lead for something good. That yes, they, out of it. they have higher ideals than just their own interests. Agreed. Yes. 